Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have three INFP females. And so Kelsey, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Hi, I'm Kelsey. Um, I am an INFP, I'm 27. I live in the US Midwest and I have a, a nine wing one Enneagram. I'm still a little, I'm still a little bit uh, iffy on that at times, but I'm going to go with 9 wing one for now. <laughs> awesome. And Eve? Hi. Um, my full name is actually Evelyn, but Eve is a lot easier, so I use Eve. Um, I am 23 years old, turning 24 next month, so yay. Um, INFP, of course. And um, Enneagram, I want to say I'm a 4 wing 3 or a 3 wing 4. I'm still... Figuring that part out. Um, and yeah, I live in California, Northern California, currently finishing up my bachelor's degree in psychology and marketing. So yeah, that's a little about me. Excellent. And Mallory? Um, hi, my name is Mallory, also known as Mythical INFP. Um, I am a nine wing eight. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, I'm an SPSO. Um, I'm a freelance video editor and I guess artist as well, suddenly. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I just graduated college. Well, I guess not just a year ago. And uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> and I'm an Incubus fan. <laughs> oh, <heck yeah. laughs> that's awesome. And I'll have everyone's Twitters linked below. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first question of tonight, what are your hobbies? My hobbies are definitely more along the lines of, um, you know, things like photography. Um, I like to go to and support a lot of, you know, like my local shops and everything here in my town. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, going and finding uh, new like little hole in the wall places. Um, and also we're in a pandemic, so support. <laughs> Support local businesses, please. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I collect mugs and I've got a little elephant back here. They're my comfort animal. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I end up, you know, collecting and finding those little tiny, you know, elephant pieces and stuff like everywhere I go. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, gosh. What else? I don't know. I try and um, coordinate a lot of uh, like get togethers and things like that um, for friend groups uh, with family, things, things like that. Um, being able to get together and uh, be social with the people that I love and care about is really important to me. Um, so I would say that that would kind of like fall into the line of, you know, hobby, I guess. Um, because I feel like I'm always, I'm always trying to plan, plan something like that. Yeah. So speaking of elephants, I notice yeah. FI users are the most likely to collect items in a certain theme. Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. one back there. Elephant. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just noticed mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Eve has a collection of unicorns. Yes, yes I do. Mm -hmm. Would I just you have like to, to show get us? it? <laughs> I mean, this is not my room, um, but I have like a unicorn pen. I have a unicorn headband, um, obviously a mug, a pinata. Um, I'm pretty sure there's more. I can't think of them right now. But yeah, I collect unicorn stuff. It's almost a little too much. I, I try to take it easy sometimes. Yeah, when FI loves something, it goes gung-ho. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for oh, sure. Yeah. So on the topic of that, impulse purchases. Have you guys ever done any impulse purchasing? Everything I buy is impulse. I don't need <laughs> anything that I buy. I see it, I want it, I spend the money. <laughs> it's really unhealthy. Same, I feel that. And it's getting it's getting worse as I get older. <laughs> Yeah, and, it, and like especially during quarantine, it's so easy. Yeah. Like, you're bored and you're like, 
I want a little bit of joy in my life. So you buy something and getting a package is like Christmas. Every yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it really does feel like Christmas. You're just like cutting open it. And yeah. the Amazon guys hate me and my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like FI tries to express itself in what we buy. So if we like we buy whatever feels like us, you know, it's like our way of expressing our individuality. So if you see something and you're like, that's me, then you want to collect that item because that's that's how your FI almost expresses itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, just don't ever set me loose in a Target. Oh, just don't. Target. <laughs> what is with Target? It's like addicting. I girl, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the lighting. It's the lights and the red. It gets you excited. <laughs> yep, it's got to be it. It's got to be it. Wow, that that sounds lovely. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. What is your favorite impulse purchase item? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I have several mugs that I've collected that have been just impulse purchases. Like when I've been, you know, away traveling or whatever that I absolutely love. Um, I also have, um, I don't know, some house plants that have been some pretty sweet impulse purchases. I'm a bit of a plant parent. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yay. Hey. This is awesome. This is bonding time. Oh, also, sure. <laughs> Mallory, what are your hobbies? Um, well, gardening. Just got into that last summer. And honestly, mm. it was my decision. My mom had retired and she her a bunch of her co-workers came by the house and gave her a bunch of stuff so they gave her a bunch of plants she doesn't really have a green thumb and so i was like you know what i'll take it upon myself i want a pet i can't have any pets in the house so i will take care of the plants so i got really consistent with it and started loving these little plants so that gardening or planting or whatever and uh drawing and watercolor um definitely finding new music um Ooh, that's that's a big one for me too yeah yep. i like to skate here and there i'm not very good but it's fun um yoga sometimes you can see the yoga mat back there um pretty much like i like to stick my hand in a little bit of everything like cooking and stuff everything oh just co yeah cooking is another big one for me that's yeah. one that i really yeah. developed over this time in pandemic Same. you know it's so, fun everything's fun yeah. can't lie I I'm agree. Never sew, though. I will never sew. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I don't think I just. Mm, I'd I be guarded. I'd be trash for that. <laughs> no matter what. That's pretty much it. Yeah. 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 Your FI is like, I like this. I like this. Oh, but not sewing. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very strong opinion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I forgot to mention this. <laughs> Absolutely. And he's like, I have more to add and more mm -hmm. to add. <laughs> I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to cut it short. Yeah. And Eve, what are your hobbies? So um, I don't really have a ton of time right now for hobbies because um, I have six classes. And so I'm like constantly doing that. And then on, I also run my club on campus. So I have to run my own club. And that, that means always having my, myself busy with that. But when I do get a chance, I like to have um, like me time in the evenings, which I recommend, especially as INFPs, like we need our me time. Yes. Um, where I just have like fluffy blankets and oh, it's so nice. Fluffy blankets, a back massager. I have my comics, my, my mangas. Um, oh. I'm actually reading the Avatar comics right now and they're pretty interesting, oh. I recommend. They're funny, I love them. Yeah, I like to like listen to audiobooks while I do things. That's also fun. Um, yeah, like I think that's the gist of it. Like organizing. I used to be into photography as well, so I feel that like we have a we have a draw to photography. I feel like I yeah. do. Okay. Well, we like capturing the beauty of things, you know. For sure. And lately, 
I've been like really into just sunsets and like how beautiful everything. Oh my god, like I ha it doesn't matter where you are, you can always look at the sunset. It's like Mother Nature's gift to everyone because every everyone can see it mm -hmm. and everyone can appreciate you it. You can't beat that, a like, good sunset. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the colors, it gets pink, it gets orange, and ah, yeah. I love it. It just feels perfect. So, yeah, so I mean, just doing that. Um, spending time in nature is really important, especially by myself. Um, nature is really, really important, like streams, water, walking, all that stuff. Um, having like lo fi in the background is like yeah. obviously like <laughs> INFP ambiance. So yeah. yeah, that's the gist of it. Yeah, and a trend I see with the FI users who join my panels is some of them have really nice earrings because it also shows a bit of their individuality. It's like earrings that I haven't seen other people wear, but they like rock it. <laughs> I was just to wear my pretty ones. I have like these really, really cute ones where like it's, wooden and it's like engraved oh i love it i just i have so many earrings because that's like how i express you know i'm not like dressed up or anything for this i i'm just in my casual garb but i usually i have like cute tops and like cute earrings and whatnot so i mean we like to yeah like earrings and jewelry and clothing is how we express like our individuality and our style yeah You'll see a stylisticness to it. Like Kelsey's room has a stylisticness to it. And it? <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I feel like it's just like a mismatch of all different stuff. I noticed we have <laughs> our rooms kind of like an oasis. Like, oh, like mm -hmm. where we stay most of the time has to really, res like, really match us because we just love to like almost wrap ourselves in what we love and so yes. and for me my room has to be has to be me <laughs> I have to melt in my room same. disappear in it yes same mm -hmm. yeah I mean you know I mean since you know being a child and everything like my room has always been that one place that I can go and I know that I can fully be myself in mm -hmm. my room by myself you know where I have all of my you know things that represent me and who I am, you know, here. And I can, oh my God, like, you know, walking in my room after being out all day or whatever. Yes. Being in my room, I feel like I can breathe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. That's Just amazing. Fully relax, you know? Yeah. So on that topic, I'm wondering who, who is you? Okay, that's not proper grammar, but like, it's kind of like, you said that your room is symbolic of who you are. So who is yes. that? Well, I mean, it has little elements here and there. Like, I, I mean, I like makeup. I have a little spot in my room where I keep all of my makeup. I have, um, you know, I've got like little elephants and stuff everywhere. I've got elements of travel. I've got photos and uh, little stuffed animals, like that kind of thing. Um, just small things, you know, all over the place that just kind of represent parts of my personality or the things that I enjoy. Um, I don't know, like from, you know, like my bedding to uh, like the stylized lamps that I have, like all that kinds of stuff, you know? Um, it, I think it just represents like, just, I don't know, different parts of me. It's just kind of like a, a mismatch of all of the things that I like and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's yeah, like, like we can get pretty fond of our things. Yeah. You know, like they're like our, our babies almost. It's so yes. hard to get rid of some mm -hmm. things like oh god you know um <laughs> it's like cutting off a piece of yourself and like leaving it in the trash um <laughs> which like you know personally i i want to i love to travel and i mm -hmm. i have a lot of trips planned um like long-term trips which means yeah. that you can't take a lot of things with you so it's like right. ah, yeah. but they're me so it's like having to cut those things out of your life um but yeah i feel you there i do <laughs> yeah calling something your baby is very f-i-t-e 
<laughs> I don't, like I've heard yeah. a lot of, mm-hmm. wow. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I think we just like really grow attached to certain things. Like I'm sure most people have something that they've grown up with, but I have a stuffed animal I sleep with every night that I've had since I was seven. And honestly, I know I'm like, I'm 23, but if I did lose it or if something happened, I would cry. It's just a stuffed animal. Yeah. I would cry. Um, when it comes it's, to- It's like, that sentimental attachment. Yes. It, it, you can grow. Um, it becomes yeah. a love. It grows to be yeah. something you love. And that's probably the only thing I'm really, really, really attached to. But, mm-hmm. you know, there's other things I could say I find important. But there's there's very select things that I would label my baby or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what that- what type of things are your baby? I don't know. I guess something I really, really love. Like... I love, I I mentioned Incubus. I love the band Incubus. I wouldn't say they're my baby, but they're kind of my baby. (laughs) (laughs) Like, they're mine. They mean a lot to me. So, you know, something that, something that you really connect with and just you feel is a part of you is your baby. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Those are words I hear a lot that FI users say, they say my baby, mine, a part of me, when they say, when they're talking about something they love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Do you guys like, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. (laughs) Sorry. Um, like, I find that we're, when we're in relationships or when we're like dating someone, um, we definitely grow a lot more attached than the usual person. Um, we, we do call them because they are kind of, a part of us and they are kind of like ours you know and i i remember like referring to you know my past boyfriend like oh yeah he's he's my baby he's mine you know my boy Mm -hmm. so i feel like we do grow attached to especially in relationships as well i was actually going to um ask a question if i could yeah um so do you guys also find yourselves um feeling really protective over certain people or certain things in your life? Because I know I sure do. I am, I am mama bear. I don't know. Like I could see myself being in a situation where I am protective over something or someone, but I can't say that I am right now. Um, Mm -hmm. Like I used to, in high school, I used to, um, watch kids at this program thing and I grew to really love those kids they became like my little buddies Mm -hmm. and in a way I was very protective of them like some of them that I I especially grew more attached to but I I don't know like I I haven't found myself to be too protective of anything or anyone right now definitely see that happening like for sure for sure yeah yeah I find that there is a subsection of FI users who get really protective and possessive of the people and things that they love. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know for me, it definitely comes from a place of, like, I love and care about this person very deeply, and I want to make sure that they are taken care of, that they are healthy, happy, and, um, you know, like, I am able to do everything that I can to make sure that that's the case in their life, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I don't know. That's where that comes from for for me. Well, I also wanted to talk about like the, the opposite side of that. Cause like, um, I feel like we all, we do have the capacity to attach pretty strongly, but we also have a capacity to detach sometimes. Oh yes. Um, right. Like let's talk about that. You know, like the, the other side of that, that bonding, that separation. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For me, um, that is very tied to my trust being broken with that person um, or within a situation um, or not feeling safe. Um, I don't know. I just it's very easy for me to pull away emotionally. Mm-hmm. Um 
And uh, like, honestly, like I can move on like that. Like it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not a problem, you know? So, I mean, yeah, it, it is very, very easy for me to detach from other people or certain situations, um, really depending on uh, specifically how I and other people have been treated uh, within that situation or uh, those circumstances, or should it be like in a relationship or, you know, whatever, <laughs> a friendship, it is very, very easy for me to detach if I feel a certain type of way <laughs> or have had yeah, I feel know, like a, a bad experience. It's the same for me. It's pretty yeah. easy. Like you just kind of, there's like a trash can in my brain and you just go in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can be cold-blooded too you know yeah. we can be pretty cold-hearted yeah. and we, we i think really it ties can. into the fi they you deserve know? It. the fi yeah 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 like if we if we do reject you we give people second chances actually more than second chances like five chances seven chances <laughs> And then, but like once you hit that wall, yeah, they're, they're done. done. <laughs> they're done, and it, yeah, that it has to be pretty bad for us to dump you. But we can do it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, a phrase that I've heard from FI users say a lot is "burning the bridges." Like they're fine with oh. burning the bridges if they need to. Yeah. Light it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's because what you guys were talking about when that person is either treating you poorly or kind of going against your values in a very core way. Yes. it, it kind of calls for that burning of the bridge. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I would one hundred percent. I think with that. definitely on social media. Like I, I know I've done that a lot. I've like gotten rid of a lot of people because I've either outgrown them um, or they've just yes. become toxic like if they don't bring anything into my life then I don't see the point of having them there yeah I mean I I definitely understand that for sure me too that is so true and so the next question how are you like as a child I was really really shy um I wasn't really shy with the like people my age like I was able to socialize pretty well and have like a group of friends growing up pretty much um but when it came to strangers or people older than me or adults, I was extremely shy. Like you could not get a word out of me. Um, it was almost painfully shy. Like a lot of my parents' friends were like, is something wrong with your kid? Like, is something mm -hmm. actually wrong? And they, you know, it's like, no, she's just shy. Um, and that's pretty much like it, but um, socially. But when it came to like how to entertain myself, I was really good at entertaining myself. I loved, playing with dolls, um, drawing, you know, the kid stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, speaking of drawing, Mallory has a really beautiful watercolor drawing that I'm gonna flash on the screen right now because yes. it's just so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. It is, it's so gorgeous. Your art is beautiful. Thank you. I mean, yeah. So and who else wants to share about them as a kid? Yeah, I can go. Um, uh, I was like the typical like INFP kid, like just a total loner growing up. But I was just always in like my head and always about fantasy. I like read all these books. I was like so stuck in books to the point where like I got in trouble for reading too much. Um, and my teacher would like tell my mom, you know, she daydreams so much. Like, is your kid OK? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was yeah. just that like weird loner kid who would like do a bunch of projects. Like I would collect ladybugs as a kid and like have these like, little homes for them and stuff. Just like I know, just like typical INFP stuff. Yeah, that's you true. know. So I was. Yeah, I would do that kind of stuff <laughs> with like um, I don't know, like fireflies and stuff. Like I would keep them like in a little jar or like you know make a little house or whatever for them. Yeah, I would do that kind of stuff too. Um, for me, I was, I was, I was loud as a kid. Um, I still am as a person, <laughs> as you guys can probably tell. Um, but I was definitely more, um, 
I was very confident and um, mm, I mean, I was shy, definitely. But um, I mean, I had a big personality <laughs> and I, I never met a stranger. Um, I had so much fun making friends, like pretty much everywhere I went. Um, I, yeah, I had, I had so much fun as a kid. Um, I, I played outside like all the time. I was homeschooled. So I got to, you know, uh, enjoy more, you know, time outside and everything with, you know, a few of my friends that lived up the street. Um, you know, and play with my brother and everything. Um, I have a great relationship with my brother. We've, we've always been pretty close. Um, just, you know, I, I call him kind of like a built-in best friend, <laughs> but, uh, and he's INTJ by the way. Um, so yeah, uh, gosh, but yeah, all the time outside and, uh, you know, coloring, uh, yeah, lots of, you know, like arts and crafts type stuff. I love doing anything like that. Um, art and history. Um, those were usually kind of like my, my best subjects and stuff when I would, you know, uh, be graded in classes and stuff. And later on, English was, you know, something that was more primary, but yeah. That's amazing. I would have wanted to be all your friends when you were kids. Like, Y'all are amazing. <laughs> and so how do you speculate that female INFPs are different from the male INFP counterpart? My uh, original thought here um, is honestly, I just feel like our culture as a whole um, you know, I mean, it's, it's very toxic in a lot of ways towards men, um, as in making them repress a lot of their emotions, um, and make them, um, make them not want to maybe express themselves, uh, as they should be able to, you know, freely. Um, so I would say, um, that would probably be one of the biggest distinctions is how they express and experience their own emotions. Yeah, that was yeah. my yeah. first thought. Immediately when you asked that, I was like, oh, definitely expressing emotions. I feel like female INFPs, obviously, it's more acceptable to be openly emotional. Uh, yes, absolutely. You no, know, uh, open, not openly contemplative, but, but like... I don't know. It, it just it's more acceptable for us to be our dramatic little selves, whereas right you know, when it, when you're a male INFP, they may be stereotyped as something like, "Oh, are you gay?" or something like that, because yes. it's not acceptable for m men to be first of all introverted, like they're expected yes. to be loud. Second of all, you know, they're supposed to be stoic and stuff, and and that's just not how it should be. So definitely just. Um, expressing yourself is a way different thing. Yeah, big time. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. I assume male INFPs would have a harder time making friends because um, their male counterparts wouldn't understand them as much as when like a non-female, I, I mean a non-INFP female would be more willing to approach a shy, quiet person and not think they're weird, you know, something like that. Absolutely agree with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, I would say male INFPs have more toned down rooms. So it's less FI evident, like they wear less FI like indicators and their room looks like less symbolic of them as a person. Whereas female, I think female INFPs feel more permission on a whole to kind of express themselves more in, in terms of decorations. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Yeah, I feel thing. like um as as women were I feel like INFP women are allowed to be themselves um more than men are so it's more socially acceptable to be who I am it's almost expected of me as a woman to be introverted and a feeler 
Mm-hmm. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I feel like INFP males have a lot of potential to really be like amazing people because they have so much empathy that like a lot of males can lack. Mm-hmm. They're in tune with emotion. They have empathy. They have a lot of really strong traits that if they can manage to really cultivate and not give in to that toxic masculinity, then they can really grow so much as a person. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that's, that's exactly why they have such a soft spot in my heart. Yes. When they, they really are them. so special. Yes. When they accept themselves as they are and are like, this is me and express themselves, they're literally the best people on earth. Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. I feel like it's easier for them to go into those negative states or it's easier for them to to become unhealthy INFPs because of all that societal pressure. Yeah, for sure. So they do face more challenges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was really well said. They have more barriers to being themselves, but when they're able to overcome those, like they're unstoppable. An, an, like unstoppable force of empathy and kindness in their heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. Yeah, they provide for other people. Fully agree. Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent male INFP empowerment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so this is another question for everyone. Okay. What makes you a little different than everyone else around you? What, yeah. What is your quirk? Oh gosh. Um, when it comes to my family, at least, um, honestly, I have, I have two siblings. I have one INFJ older sister and one INFP much older sister. We were 11 years apart. Um, and between us three siblings, I'm, I'm the, I'm way more open with my thoughts and feelings, but I think that might be my eight wing. So like, I like to keep the calm, but if I, if, you know, I love to just see what I'm thinking and then, yeah, my siblings will be like, oh, if Mallory's usually the one who will say whatever (laughs) like i'll Mm -hmm. literally say whatever like even if it's technically slightly inappropriate like my brain just comes out for it (laughs) yeah it's honestly not good but (laughs) (laughs) but that's why they love me they're like mallory's just has the courage to express herself and i'm like all right cool that's probably it Um, yeah over the years oh i'm sorry go ahead i thought you i thought you were through (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so did I. Um, when I'm with friends, um, I'm also more openly strange. Like, definitely, I'm more willing to be quirky or, or say the weird joke or just be a little bold, I guess. A little bold. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Put a wall there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for me, um, I mean, the people around me, I am surrounded by J types, surrounded by J types. I am the only uh, P type that I know of that, you know, I interact with on a regular basis. So um, that can be that can be pretty complicated at times. Um, I get on a lot of people's nerves, (laughs) but um, uh, so yeah, like when it comes to, um, I don't know how to approach things, um, my methods and my, um, my energy levels, my inspiration levels, all of that, you know, <laughs> is on a different wavelength than the people that I'm around, um, so that that for me would probably be a, a bit of a quirk in my, at least in my life. So you mentioned uh, getting on people's nerves. What specifically uh, causes that? I think it's more of the um, the fact that I'm doing something my way instead of trying to fit into um, a certain box or um a certain ideal that someone else has that's that you know i i kind of i fight back a little bit on that i'm also um the type of person that will like i'm going to be the person to shake the table like in my family specifically like if there is if there's something 
you know, that's bothering somebody or whatever, like, I'm going to be the person to shake the table about it. <laughs> you know, like I'm that person that will 100% go and stand up for, um, for myself or for somebody else, you know? Um, I don't know. In, in my family, it's very, very SI Dom, very much like go with the flow or, <laughs> um, just kind of, um, so, okay, I'm going to say, like, act like certain things don't exist or certain problems aren't there. <laughs> so I'm the one that brings the attention to those things. And in my family, they would call that a very different quality or a different quirk. So I don't know. That's that's probably what I would say for me, because that is very different from the people in my life. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Perceivers, so people with a P at the end of their four-letter code, they're known for shaking up the status quo. So people who, if something is weird and it should be not done that way, perceivers are the most likely to go like, hey, and bring it to attention and try to like shake shake things up so they yep. they can go another way. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like to call something out, negative or positive, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, just be more bold and kind of just speak your mind a little more, I guess. Yeah, especially when it goes against a core value. It kind of oh, yes. yeah, for feels sure. a necessity to speak. For yes. sure. Yeah. And so what parts of the INFP description do you resonate with and find to be accurate? A lot. Mm. I don't even know where to start with that. Like, I definitely relate to a lot. It's easier for me to point out what I don't relate to. And so, I mean, when it comes to stereotypes, I have never related to the extremely over emotional crying out in public sort of like being, um, I think my sister who's also an INFP, honestly, she's a little more um, soft than me, but she's a 911. So that may be a little bit of the difference, but um, I would say I'm, I'm relatively rough around the edges. Like, um, outwardly maybe inwardly i'm a little more sensitive or something but i think definitely i don't fit with the stereotype of us being crybabies or like i'll cry <laughs> but yeah <laughs> things have to trigger it like i'm not just crying all the time and if someone like hurts yeah. my feelings unless it's really bad i will not cry in their face that's against my rules as a human do not let them see you cry yep same. Um, I will <laughs> not hard. be taking advantage <laughs> of, and you know, I, you know, I, I can't, I can't relate to that. Okay, um, like having worked in customer service, some people will make you want to cry. Like, have you ever had like a really mean customer, yeah. and you're like, don't cry? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I so bad. Service, but I worked at the front desk at my university in in office, and that office is what they do in that office is extremely important to people's graduation progress. And so people would come in there angry. They would come in there wanting to fight you because you know like what's going on back there I can't graduate and that was honestly terrifying like I never cried but it would be scary <laughs> um, oh I bet oh my god yeah and so that's a little bit like my only customer service kind of job but I could see myself if I wanted to definitely crying <laughs> if I worked in a restaurant like as a waitress I probably would cry in the back room because people really are so mean sometimes I'm not gonna lie I've had uh, a few times at work with my job where people have said some really really awful things to me mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie I have like cried on my drive home from work or oh, you know like went to the bathroom and just like took a few minutes yeah <laughs> you know yeah if you work in customer service like you know the bathroom is for crying breaks oh like yeah. <laughs> you have to go and uh, legit like you have to go and like really let it out because if you carry it you're gonna carry it all day it's just uh it's for not sure. fun being empathic people that is so accurate we're definitely going to carry all of that you know what's weird us. when I do cry it 
it's never really something that happened to me. For me, it, I cry when it, something happened to another person. Like, I don't know what it is. I know that's kind of weird. Most people cry when like, you know, something really bad happens to you, unless it's like a death or something. I get that, that's happened to me. But when it comes to like, if I hear someone's story or if, you know, like a friend of mine had something really bad happen to them, I, I cry for them as opposed to me just like crying in, in my everyday life. You know, I don't know. It's like, I guess it's an empathetic thing, but. Oh yeah, for weird. sure. Yeah, this squashes the myth that, you know, FI users aren't empathetic. I hear it around sometimes and it's so wrong. Like sometimes like what Mallory says, like they can cry for you. Like it's because oh, they know yeah. how it's like to be like you, like in that situation. Yeah, yeah completely, 100%. Uh, do you guys do this thing yeah. where you can actually like conjure up something that makes you really sad? <laughs> Like, you know how actors, they'll think of something that can make you, that, the, that can make them cry. Like, yes. I can just imagine me being in a situation or, yeah, like putting myself in another person's shoes and like start to tear up. Like, I don't, I don't know if I cry, but I definitely tear up. Oh, girl, I can cry on the spot anytime. <laughs> anytime. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, the emotions are always like right there under the surface. Um, but, you know, I mean, depending on the situation and everything, like a lot of us have the ability to regulate those emotions and our expression of those emotions. So, I mean, even if we're, you know, feeling a certain way, doesn't, you know, always mean that like we're going to sit down and cry about it. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you yeah. know what I mean like like even though we're talking about how much we do cry let's squash the cry baby <laughs> stereotype <laughs> yeah even though it's true let's crush it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well one of the biggest misconceptions that really like annoys me is just the idea that the INFP is weak because um, oh, yes. the INFP is oh yeah it just betrays us as like weak little marshmallows that get nothing done in life but that's yeah. not the case absolutely yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I've had a lot of, you know, people, you know, over the years that have, um, you know, tried to push that sort of uh, narrative on me, even though I'm not displaying <laughs> anything that could be related to that sort of narrative. Mm -hmm. um, but because they see me as... Um, somebody who doesn't have as much confidence maybe as they think I should have or uh, don't express myself a certain way or whatever. They push this narrative on us um, and think they did something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's really become such a negative stereotype that I feel like majority of us do not embody. No, I, I would argue we may be some of the strongest out there because I agree with that. Because we have to fit, we have to fit in this world that we all feel like doesn't cater or not cater to us, but doesn't like help us with who we are. And so we have to like very much in our daily lives, every day, sort of play a role. Of, Absolutely, of, yeah. yeah that's we're we're well, operating in a world that was not. Built for specifically us. made for people like us mm -hmm. we're supposed to fit in to this specific spot <laughs> and mm -hmm. be this type of person that they want us to be mm -hmm. and we can't always do that and it takes strength to like not <laughs> absolutely it. it takes a lot of strength to not fit and have people you know not understand you you know it's i think that takes yes. a lot of strength inner strength and, and it takes inner confidence as well I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. What I find so beautiful about FI users is if they have a conviction, they're willing to stick with it, even if no one around them really believes it too. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I notice Eve behind you, like you have a pride flag behind you. And I find that like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I find when like an FI user believes in something, let, let's say like th theoretically, your whole household didn't believe in like those type of rights, but an INFP doesn't really like care that no one around them believes in that. Like if it's 
if it's right and good, then it should be right and good regardless. <laughs> yeah, and, oh my gosh. Yeah. We're so stubborn. We're so stubborn sometimes when it comes yeah, to yeah, like our you. shit. Like that's my mom's you know, coming from a stubborn. Oh, sorry, coming from like a traditional uh, Mexican family. Like just oh, it's just disgusting how they think of women and how they think that we should be put in our place. And like that just encourages me more to like get my education that encourages me more to travel like i i want to push back against yeah, that yeah really contributes to that drive yeah mm -hmm. yeah so that's the strength of fi no matter their outer surroundings no matter who believes in what like if the fi user if it, if they know it's right and that's it's 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 what should be the case they don't care if anyone else around them believes in that if because if it's right then it it doesn't matter if the crowd believes it. So they're able to go against the crowd. Mm -hmm. And like if the crowd is wrong, that is really important. That is so important. Yeah. And it, that's yeah. why a lot of FI users tend to be on the forefront of social change. Mm -hmm. In front of social social change, you'll see so many FI users because they'll be fighting for it even if it's not popular yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yes. It's true. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Eve. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should wait until she comes back for yeah. the next question. Let's talk about something like uh, your hat and the band. What's your <laughs> song? Oh, do not get me started. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> no, Come um, on, Mal. So Incubus is this band from SoCal. I'm from SoCal. Um, of these five dudes who you know are really artistic, really nice guys. And the lead singer is an INFP male. Who's oh, we love to see it. <laughs> Yes, and I'm very much in love with him. <laughs> That's my incubus rant. <laughs> That's really interesting. So if an INFP likes an INFP celebrity or INFP anything, is that is that narcissism or is that good? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> I think we, we like parts of ourselves and then we like to see it in other people too. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I would say that yeah. as well. There's a little bit of, you know, like positive mirroring, I think, that happens. Definitely. That. And they also yeah. kind of inspire you to be yourself. You know, yeah, for you sure. Know, you're like, oh, they're kind of like me. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone needs representation that reminds them of themselves in, yes. in something so they can strive exactly. towards something. Really great answer. And so the next question, how do you experience your functions? starting at your dominant function, introverted feeling, FI? I guess what I'm thinking is that FI feels a bit like your inner, the inner mechanisms of like your brain and how, how, how you kind of, I guess, navigate your feelings isn't really, it's not easy to show outside of yourself. So you may feeling, may be feeling a certain way or you may feel happy or whatever, but your outward, body for some reason doesn't show it very well so people don't know what you're thinking it's almost like you're wearing like like a poker face a little bit mm -hmm. um is that, is that fi that is definitely fi yeah okay. that's, yeah that's right on okay. um any that's probably like my favorite function that i same have i love it like it makes everything fun i guess it does. It makes everything fun but it makes everything really also really complicated because I don't know, you can like you can think of all these possibilities and stuff, but also I have ADHD. So I was diagnosed when I was nine. It's not very severe, but that's definitely why I have ADD. So you know, any great time. Yeah, I mean any with um, you know, being able to um experience uh, you know being able to think of all of these different possibilities, being able to see so many different futures or different options. Um, I don't know, like, <laughs> I get overwhelmed when I think of possible jobs or um, thinking of, you know, if I go back to school, like, what would that be like? What would that look like for me? Like, so, um, you know, finding, um, you know, finding out, like, what the end result would be is is very interesting when you have I and any a little paralyzing because all the options it is. That, it's like which one <laughs> yeah which one oh for sure 
Yeah. That's definitely, um, yeah, you just see all different kinds of, you know, possible future outcomes mm -hmm. uh, when you have any, and it really can be scary. At times. Yes. <laughs> it can be, yes, it can feel very, yeah. very overwhelming. I'm yeah, sorry. but it definitely <laughs> makes things like, you know, having conversation and everything with, with others so much fun. <laughs> Because you can very easily jump from one topic to the next. Mm -hmm. or um, It's an idea generator. You know, just, yeah, it really is. Like it, you know, especially if there are too any users um, in a room together. Like it's crazy. We, we can always find something to talk about. Like oh. it is never an issue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's brainstorming heaven. Yes, I mean, it really, the sun yes we are so, so good at brainstorming. Oh my God. Yeah, get us in a group and we can riff off of, you know, other people like it's no big deal. Yes, it's our number one like quality a little bit. I, yes, I, I agree. <laughs> it's, it's, we're very good at that. I think it'd make us like really good stand-up comedians. Yeah. It's the I could N E. See it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the N E and S E and everyone that makes them quick witted and to be able to have that like boom bam bam. Like yeah. those quick jokes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so what is everyone's experience of SI? Um gosh, for me, um, SI is very uh, comfort based. Um, I find, you know, SI being, you know, revisiting uh, good memories and, um, oh gosh, like just, just comfort, yeah. whether it's comfort food, whether it's um, being physically comfortable, like under my blankets, whatever it is. Um, being able to have that, um, you know, that alone time for myself, uh, it got, it, it can, it can manifest in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, but those for me are the primary, uh, are the primary ways that I experience. It's the same I, thing for me. I'm yeah. very much about, I gotta be comfortable, um, physically. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really help with you know, sports. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so agree that, um, you know, but it's, that's something you can kind of overcome with practice, but For sure. uh, yeah, very, it's very much comfort based. Like, yeah, we just love to have like a cozy little things and be in our heads and be very sentimental. And it does bring, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, being, uh, being brought up in an SI Dom home, I am very much in tune with my SI. <laughs> I was taught from an early age. <laughs> yeah, especially as nines, that amplifies it. Like, I yes. think nines kind of like that peace, that comfort. That oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is your experience of your TE? I'm slowly, I think I'm like developing that. A little more like as a kid it was virtually non-existent like it didn't really show itself and then it really sort of revealed itself when I got into college and like high school I was very much not concentrated I, I had my mind elsewhere all the time and I didn't focus I didn't basically just didn't have my shit together and then college hit and it, I really developed like a sort of inner structure i guess and so mm -hmm. that really helped me out um yeah i'm it's slowly developing i guess mm -hmm. well that's good um for me um i mean i grew up with an intj brother and an istj father um so there was a lot of you know tea in our house <laughs> um so i mean just from exposure and everything to people who have, you know, like a high tier TE um, in their stack, I feel like it was, you know, like it's shown me 
specifically, you know, like how, how to engage with my, with my TE. I've also had um, a friendship with uh, someone that I had met on uh, the MBTI Twitter community and uh, she was ENTJ and she and I, we actually made it a point to help each other uh, learn and um, I don't know, I guess just kind of uh, figure out how to engage with our inferior functions. So um, I don't know, from uh, that sort of standpoint as well, uh, I've really learned how to use my TE. Um, I still, you know, of course, struggle. <laughs> Um, but I mean, nobody's perfect, <laughs> of course, but, uh, yeah, my TE, I love to be organized and structured in certain ways. And when it comes to certain specific things, like I, I like things a certain way, you know, when it comes to, um, that when it comes to certain uh, aspects of my life. So, uh, TE is very, very helpful. Um, for me in those aspects, because I need structure. <laughs> I need as much structure as I can get, because otherwise I just feel like I am floating. <laughs> the NE takes control. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it seems like you, you tried to learn TE from a first slot TE user. So an ENTJ. I, yes. I wonder if that can apply for other people as well. If you want to develop your inferior function, talk to someone with it as your dominant function, like yes. what Kelsey was doing. Yeah. yeah. And since we're talking about functions right now, there was a part where you could see Mallory's FI and how she responded to one of the questions. So Kelsey was talking about possessiveness and how some FI users relate to protectiveness and that type of thing, right? So what Mallory said then is something that I hear a lot of FI users kind of say so she she kind of replied with especially because si si as well in an infp stack you said like well in my experience it's more like this so sometimes like fi if they know themselves so well that if you say something that doesn't completely drive with them they can correct you right away or yes. they know they know specifically what part isn't true about yeah. what you're saying that applies to them mm, yeah. yeah absolutely and then yeah. insert um like you did, Mallory, uh, you know, what your experience is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how you know someone has high FI. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, because whenever I say something inaccurate about my FI friends, they'll go like, hey, Joyce, that that isn't actually that true. They'll tweak it. They'll go like, this is my actual yeah. experience. And that's FI is the quickest with that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. We love yeah, them. that's honestly something about um, dominant FI users in particular is that we do know ourselves. Mm -hmm. We take the time and make it a priority to figure out exactly who we are. Very much. Um, I mean, so, you know, when we're and we do that a lot of the time when we're young, mm -hmm. you know, when we're young. So when we're able to go out into the world then, you know, as adults, I feel like we have more of a security in who we are mm -hmm. because we have done that inner work. We have, we have studied ourselves from the time we were little. So um, I don't know. I feel like that's definitely a, an advantage to uh, having dominant FI. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. I think we we do a lot. We spend a lot of our time, like our alone time is filled with a lot of self-reflection. So yes. it's like, it's not like we're just kind of sitting there not doing anything. We're always, always thinking yes. either about ourselves or whatever in life. But I, I am personally always like focused on self-improvement and self-growth. Yes. And so during my long time, and especially during quarantine, I've been thinking about, hmm, you know, what can I do to help myself with this? Or what kind of things can I get into to improve with this? Or, yeah, yeah it's a lot of self-reflection. That's like yeah. our number one thing. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's also, you know, kind of in the same vein of 
um, you know, like we may be a little sensitive to getting criticism and everything from somebody else, but we are also our own biggest critics. We yes. will sit and we will pour over different aspects of ourselves yes. and, um, you know, reflect on, okay, so what are the good qualities that I have and where are the areas that I can genuinely try to make improvements? Mm -hmm. We are constantly trying to do better and be better. That's true. I think the other day I tweeted, like, something I fear is, like, you know yourself really, like, you think you know yourself really well, like, you know these traits and stuff, but ultimately, like, not saying not like discrediting your own self-confidence but ultimately it's what other people think of you that kind of makes you you because you can think a lot of things about mm -hmm. yourself it may like my fear is that it's not true or that it doesn't manifest itself right. outside of what i think mm -hmm. so i think yeah i tweeted that the other day and a lot of people related to it surprisingly oh no I, yeah i absolutely relate to that i can see i can see why that got a lot of interaction yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Your tweets are just amazing. <laughs> he has a yeah. great account. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I was like, what? I mean, like, I know I have like a good amount of followers, but I never see myself as anyone like like I think I started my Twitter four years ago and the first person I followed was INFB Thoughts, who has like sixteen thousand. Yeah. I was like, oh wow. But I don't know. It's not like it's not like what I think about. Like I follow everyone who follows me back. So I, I don't know, it's just like uh, cool like I make sense great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh my gosh I love the chillness of perceivers so on a on a whole piece tend to be casual when interacting with the outer world and you'll see that especially with Mallory like she has this like chill <laughs> vibe it's just like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelsey mentioned a really interesting point that I wanted to touch on and it's about like, FI does know itself. So when you say something that doesn't sound like it, it will go like, that doesn't sound like me. However, in some areas where FI doesn't seem like it knows itself is with life, like it's like with job choices sometimes, sometimes it'll switch its mind with, huh, should I go down this path in life or this path in life? It's, it's the extroverted intuition basically. That's like yeah. so many possibilities, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. also FI will want to find a, a job sometimes that that fits its purpose and identity. And if I yes, can't find I it- I was literally going to bring that up if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. That's what I'm struggling yeah. with currently. I'm like, I, I was just gonna say that's something that I'm I'm in the same boat right now. Yeah, uh, trying to figure out. You know, um, it, yeah, I'm having a little bit of a tug of war currently, uh, in that in that area of life. So yes, that is definitely something that FI users uh, really do experience. Um, Honestly, it can be on a regular basis. <laughs> Every day. Yes, yes. Every so, day. Yes. Um, and and it's very, um, I, I definitely think that it's very, you know, moral based mm -hmm. um, and very core value based. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. When it comes to jobs and everything, I definitely feel like, I have to be doing something that I feel passionate about and that I am making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't have that, I struggle to get out of bed in the morning. Exactly. You got to like, yeah, like the first thing I think in the morning is what is my purpose today? <laughs> like, yes. Yes. If you feel like you don't have one, you might as well just stay in bed. Like there's got to be a reason yes. Yes. for everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Good reason. Yeah. yeah, that is true. So INFPs tend to think about their purpose a lot and yes, we do. tend to be mm -hmm. a little bit idealistic with their job choices and wanting an, an ideal type of yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much, Kelsey and Mallory, for coming out. And also Eve, yeah. sorry, with the internet issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Was, yeah. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. thank you for having me. I, yeah. I feel honored. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, this, this mm -hmm. has yeah. really been so great.
I, I love both of you and your Twitter accounts. They're lovely. Kelsey, I really oh, enjoyed your movie you. nights. The ones that I was able to attend, I yeah. really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, it was great having you. <laughs> the next time you have one. <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Mallory, I like your cool girl vibes. It's that chillness to your voice. When you talk, you're like, it, it seems like nothing's really bothering you, even if there is. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's all good <laughs> in the hood. <laughs> oh, that's from being from California, probably. <laughs> that's probably it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really nice to be around. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I love the decorative rooms you both have. They have like little trinkets from everywhere, and it's like it has a little piece of you in it. So I feel like I'm oh, learning wow. more about you when I stare into your room. So I love that. Yeah, and Kelsey, I love your makeup skills. You are on you. Point. Oh my yeah. goodness. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Me, God. It is flawless. Flawless. <laughs> flawless. The eye yeah. makeup snatch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sephora's like, can I hire this girl to like oh my just God. put on her eyeshadow palette? <laughs> my job. Kill it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. I appreciate that guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I like your I I don't know. I love the the thoughts you put into what is really your purpose. Like, you know, what is truly fulfilling in life. You know, these are mm -hmm. questions that people ask themselves before before they die, but you ask the, it to yourself every day. And that's amazing. Yes. Cuz that yes. generates a vast amount of self-awareness. People only realize that these things are important like right before they're dead or in the, their midlife crisis. But like, uh, yes, NFTs absolutely. have a quarter life crisis where they <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in it all the time right now. <laughs> like, would I trade it? I don't think so, but I would trade that aspect. The existential dread every day. Yeah, and the, uh, yeah. The existential dread and also the regular existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, the ones that come anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I love the existential ponderings you, you give yeah. to all of us. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It gives us a level of thought that we should like think about our own lives and how meaning fits into our own lives too. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like you think about the things that people in general should think about every day because it gives our lives meaning. So thank you for entertaining the thoughts that give humans their humanness. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Thank and it was so a pleasure much. having you both on. It was and really nice to meet you guys. Excellent. And I'll have you in future videos too, if you guys want to be on. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you everyone for watching. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye. Bye.